Hey, how's it going? I can't believe it's the end of August. The summer just flew by. It's been cold in my house. It's been really nice. I'm yeah. excited about it. I do love the beach in summer, but I'm a sucker for fall. I went and saw the Jerry Seinfeld at Wolf Trap uh -huh. uh, Monday night, and he made a comment. He's like, I like the seasons, but I never like the season that I'm in. I always <laughs> want the next one. And I was like, that's so true. That's so true. Yeah, because as soon as it gets super cold, we're like, what? Yeah, right yeah. for spring. Yeah. But right now I'm ready for fall. I love a good fire pit. I love enjoying a glass of whiskey with some friends. Yeah. Talking life, talking, you know, sports, talking real estate, whatever is going on. I saw the kids went back to school. Yeah. I'm not there yet, but yeah. your kids are going to school. Yeah. Preschool started off strong. Both kids did great. So as parents about that, when we picked them up, they had smiles on their faces. Yeah. How old is JJ? JJ is 19 months, so he'll be two in December. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. So I, I was actually talking to Cynthia about maybe sending JJ where your kids are because, yeah. you know, I'm like trying to find somebody who has like a good recommendation and experience there. It's really hard. Yeah. You don't just like Google a school and you're like, I'm going to send them there. Like, yeah. Yeah. And that's like, I think when we work with our clients that are looking for homes, so many of the conversations are about school. Yeah. And like, what school district do I send my kid to? Because you only get one chance to mm -hmm. do it. And, you know, some of our clients are newlywed or singles or there are no kids and they, they don't really care about school district as much. And yeah. maybe just for resale value. Yeah. But I always say kind of hey, if the school value is baked into the price already, the comps in that school district. So, you know, you might get a better price in a worse school district. But yeah, it's so important. You know, schools and here in Northern Virginia, we're lucky we have we're so the lucky. Best school districts. Yeah. So when I was in school growing up in Florida, I was going to private school and I hear people joke about it all the time. Like, well, there is no other option. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. um, uh -huh. <laughs> but here, yeah, we have really great schools. So but it's just about finding the one that you're comfortable at. But like at JJ's age, too, you know, that's a little early, but. He has so much energy that I'm like, he needs more stimulation. He needs like music and dancing and kids around yeah. him. Like he's ready for that. So mm. it's not even like the school district yet. It's just like the right environment, the right people. But yeah. yes. When you send your kid to school, you expect them to come home like tired. Yeah. And, right, but he's going to have just as much energy. He's still going to run around at home the rest like, of the day. Why are you dancing and singing and doing all the things my teachers are doing? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> well, speaking of, of JJ, mm -hmm. yeah, JJ, if you don't know, is Haley's one-year-old, cutest little boy you've ever seen. Like, seriously, he should be the next, should have been a Gerber baby. <laughs> but how has your real estate career changed between, like, pre-kid and after a kid? Like, having, having a, a one-year-old at home yeah. takes a lot of energy and, oh obviously, God. effort. And he's, you know, number one priority. Yeah. But you're also balancing your career as well. Yeah, I mean, I'm so lucky that I, I do have flexibility. So like the mornings I try to take pretty slow with JJ, like I get up with him every day and like do breakfast. We try to go for a walk and then we have a babysitter who comes and helps. And uh, for the first six months, I try to just do it. I was delusional, you know, <laughs> I'm a first time mom. So I was like, oh, I'm just gonna like put JJ on my back and like go show homes and like write contracts and like I can do it all. And then I was like, whoa, this is not gonna work. Yeah. So we have an awesome babysitter, her name's Hannah. And so she comes like four days a week for like four hours a day. So I have my mornings with him and then Hannah's there and then Steve comes home and he like takes over and I'll go do showings like in the evenings. But yeah, I mean, it's a lot and it's just like juggling everything and constantly like making my schedule work, which, you know, pre-kid was like I could do anything anytime. I didn't have yeah. to like ask permission to yeah. go anywhere. Or, like Life was a lot simpler. Yeah. And um, I was actually thinking about that today. I was like, why? Like I get, but I feel like I get so much more done now that I have JJ than I did before JJ. And actually this is something your wife had said to me. She was like, you know, we had so much time but, and we, we didn't even know it. Like, what were we doing with all that time? We talk about that all the time. Yeah. Like, how do we not cure cancer? Yeah. Like, you know, uh, work three jobs, uh, keep the home like perfectly clean, yeah. organized all the time. Like, what are we doing with our lives before kids? But it's so motivating. I think that's part of it. Yeah. It's like I have a purpose. I wake up and it's like, if you don't sell this house, like, how's JJ going to go to this fancy school with Ryan's kids? So. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. When it's when you're providing for one yeah. or two, yeah, that's different when you're providing for somebody who's depending on you. Mm -hmm. It's a whole different level of 
of motivation. And in my experience, it's like, it's easy to let yourself down, yeah. but it's not easy to let others down around mm-hmm. you. So that's why like with kids, it's having that purpose and that why mm-hmm. is huge. And then uh, even just whether or not you have kids, if you have somebody that you're accountable to, yeah, it's like, okay, I told you I was going to show up at the gym at this time to work out. I can't back out now because yeah. I'm going to let you down. That I can let myself out. I can hit that snooze button and sleep in. Yeah. But it's a whole other level of, of motivation. But it's fun. And there's pros and cons. Like I'm sometimes I miss bedtime. I'm sure you do too when we're out doing showings in the evenings or we miss things on the weekends because we're with clients. But for the most part, like you mentioned, if Summer has like a show like that she's doing at school, you're able to go in the middle yeah. of the day where there's a lot of parents that aren't. Yeah, we like I said we we're always constantly balancing and changing our schedule. And my kids, Brooks and Summer, like we're recording this on what, August twenty first. Brooks turns five tomorrow. Summer turns three next month. Wild. And so yeah, Easter concerts, Christmas concerts at school, like their various uh, sports. Like I'll make it to <laughs> Summer's ballet class every so often. Yeah, which is fun. And so it's not you know we're not beholden to a desk nine to five. You know we do work weekends, evenings, that kind of thing. But it's actually been interesting since the pandemic and the shift to more work from home for our clients. I feel like I was doing pre-pandemic. I was showing a lot more homes in the evenings, mm-hmm. uh, which I still do for some people that need to. But it's a lot different now where people have flexibility working from home, yeah. where they can just pop out for a showing. You know at two o'clock, three o'clock. Yeah. That's yeah. super nice. When we can work normal business hours, that's super <laughs> nice. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. yeah. But what's going on with your clients right now? Anything interesting? Yeah, I've got a couple of interesting things going on. Two really cool scenarios. One is active duty in the military. And they reached out to me. They were referred by one of my old uh, high school friends' uh, parents. Okay. And they're like, hey, Ryan, like, you know, this couple is military. They want to assume a VA loan because the story the last couple of years has been interest rates are high, right? So they found this house that had an assumable VA loan. They found it themselves? You didn't find it? (laughs) (laughs) No, they called me about it and they were like, hey, we found this house. Like, can you help us? Yeah. And that uh, happens all the time, by the way. People think it doesn't, but yeah, you still need an agent after you find the house. There's a lot of stuff. Finding it. We all have the internet. Yeah. What happens next? (laughs) It's the first step of many. So we were able to negotiate a VA loan assumption. Mm -hmm. And so rather than at the time, I think their quote for a VA loan was like six and a half or 6.75%. Okay. They're getting at 3.75%. Oh my God. And we're talking on a a million, almost a million one loan amount. Mm -hmm. And we did the math and it was saving them, I think it was around $2,000 a month or maybe it was like $2,800 a month on their mortgage payment. Wow. Just that difference in interest rate. That's great. So all of a sudden, like if they were shopping for a, a home, it would have been hundreds of, yeah, maybe half of that or two thirds of that yeah. for the same payment. Mm-hmm. But assuming a loan allows you to, at, at a lower rate, allows you to really increase your purchase I'm power. so interested. I don't know if you can share, how did they find this house? I don't know, actually. Okay. Um, they When they called me, they said that they had an appointment to go see this house. So if you don't know, like some of those sites that are out there, Zillow and Redfin, you can schedule a showing to go see a house. A lot of people think it's like, oh, the listing agent might be showing it to me or whatever. Yeah. Really, no. Like agents are paying those it companies. Might be me. Yeah. I'm on realtor.com yeah. if you're hanging out on there. Yeah. So, um, you know, agents are, are paying for those leads, right, to get uh, somebody who reaches out to schedule a showing. And a lot of consumers don't realize that. Um, and so, but they had scheduled an appointment with somebody to go see it. Yeah. Never met him before, didn't even know who it was going to be. Mm-hmm. And so, my luckily, my client is a coworker with my friend's mom. And she's like, no, don't do that. You have to have like a good experienced agent on your side. Yeah. Like you need to call Ryan and mm-hmm. go show it to you. Nice. And so they did. And then that's how, I think, I mean, they must have seen So they must, yeah, it must have been advertised online that it yeah. had a VA assumable yeah. loan. Because I have a client, Rob, I don't know if you remember Rob. Yeah. We met him at an open house. Yeah, he was back. a veteran too, right? Yeah. So um, we were looking for a while. He didn't really find anything he wanted. We weren't even looking at assumable loans at that point. He ended up renting for a little while, but we now have a search set up that's like just for assumable homes. Yeah. So it's very interesting seeing the different types of homes that pop up and what the interest rates are and all yeah. of that. So that is a way we can search. And I know you did a um, a little video for your clients not that long ago about assuming loans. You don't have to be a veteran to assume loans. Right. A lot of people think that you do. 
And let me say this loud and clear. You do not need to be a veteran to assume a VA loan. That being said, if you're not, and you assume one, the veteran that you're buying the house from uh, needs to be willing to forego their VA eligibility. So you have to find somebody who's already have the, has their next home lined up mm -hmm. or they're you know moving in with family or they're buying in cash mm -hmm. or they're you know they're moving into a retirement home or something like that yeah. where they're not going to they're not planning to use their a VA their VA benefits to buy the next home which is a you know a, a not insignificant percentage of, of the VA loans that are Yeah, I would say so. that's real. It's like probably like the older, you know, yeah. get the older homes yeah. people have owned them for a long time. Yeah, and they might have, you know, more savings and a lot of, you know, we know that in our area I think the last time I checked there was like 16% of home purchases are cash. A lot of those are the older demographic people mm -hmm. that have built up savings and equity over time. Yeah. And, uh, they're going to be more likely to do that. But yeah, we can use our resources, whether it's like them advertising in the MLS, like like the search you have set up. We also, one of our title partners, he's been able to pull for us lists of homes and target areas for properties that have a VA loan. We can specify what percentage we want it to be. And so actually right now I have a couple clients looking for assumable loans and I pulled a list. We have several hundred properties in these two cities in Northern Virginia that we're reaching out to, to see if they're willing to sell because they might not realize not only have property values gone up, so their property value is probably worth more. Yeah. But my client, if they're saving thousands of dollars a month on their mortgage payment, that house is worth a little bit more to them. So they might be able to be willing to pay, pay over market, pay definitely add, if not over market value yeah. for that home. And they don't have to do anything. They're just, yeah, they just ugh. take over the loan. Yeah. So like they literally, the way it works, you take over the exact payment. The exact remaining, so if they had a 30 year mortgage and they've lived in the house for eight years, yeah, then there's only 22 years left on the loan when they assume it. So, really cool. Like, you literally assume, even you know, you can assume even like the escrow account that's in there. It's much different than a typical process. It, it takes a lot longer, it can be, it's been a little frustrating, yeah, but we're getting there. We're supposed to close next month. And so, yeah, I'm just trying to spread the word out there that that is an option. Our interest rates are coming down a little bit, but not near the two, three, four percent. Yeah, what's the last you saw them at? I was seeing like low sixes. Yeah, like low to mid sixes right now. That's if you have above 740 credit, 20% yeah. down, that kind of thing. First time home buyer. You're still looking in the sixes. I mean, if you pay a point or two, you could probably get like 5.99. Which is crazy. Yeah. I haven't seen a five unless maybe you're doing new home construction in like the last two years. Super cool. Well, um, last thing I just want to bring up because I think it's really big right now. What is your opinion on unrepresented buyers? Unrepresented buyers. So we've always seen up unrepresented, right? Mm -hmm. People who come in, they're not a real estate agent, and they're like, I don't need an agent. I'm just going to fill out the contract by myself and I'll figure it out. Yeah. But I think we're going to start seeing a lot more of them because of the settlement. And uh, people are saying like, well, I don't want to pay commission. They don't realize how it, the negotiation works, whatever. So I think we're going to see a lot of them. And like I saw two recently. So I'm just yeah. curious, like, what's your opinion on it? Yeah. So first of all, part of put myself in, in their shoes if I was not a realtor. But knowing what I know, I couldn't imagine trying to purchase the largest asset of my entire lifetime and not know what I was and doing. If I was in a murder trial and went to defend myself and I was wrongly accused, yeah. like, no, you're not going to do that. So... <laughs> Uh, to me, it's kind of the same thing. I think it's ludicrous. I think people focus on like, oh, I want to save a minuscule amount on, you know, on commission. But ultimately, whenever I've come across it, whether it's a somebody doing it for sale by owner, I mean, yeah. nothing's really changed. People have always been able to, yeah. to represent themselves on both the purchase and the sale. Mm -hmm. But I think the stat is 89 or 91 percent of all home buyers use an agent. Yeah. So, and that's actually been, if you look at the stats, it's been going up over the years. You would think with the advent of technology and the prevalence of information on the internet, that would go down, but it's been the opposite. It's been going up because I think people realize that, hey, this is a big deal. I don't wanna mess this up. It's for many of us, we only move you know, two or three times in our entire life. Some of us only once or twice. Mm -hmm. And it's too important to risk that much yeah. for such a saving. And also the savings that they think they're getting that is exactly that's what I was supposed to say. Like you'll probably save more working with an agent, finding you a good deal or negotiating some sort of closing costs or something on your behalf. Or it's helping you avoid a mistake that's costly. That's costly, yeah. Yeah. Or not knowing what's normal and not knowing what you don't know. Mm -hmm. Anytime I've represented a buyer on a for sale by owner 
we've taken advantage and just got away with a lot more than we could have yeah. if they had an agent. Same thing on the other side. When I've been represented a seller, and this only happened a couple times, but when there's been an unrepresented buyer, they think they're saving money, but we're, we just get them to do whatever we want them to do. And it's funny you say that because we, your dad and I just signed a listing agreement like two weeks ago. And so the contracts have all just changed, you know, and there's different fields. And so a change that we've made is we're now actually charging the seller more if we have to work with an unrepresented buyer because we know that it's a lot of hand holding yeah and it's always the people who are like i know what i'm doing oh yeah it's easy it, but, you know i saw it on tv it's so okay. easy yeah yeah but they don't okay oh i want to write an offer how do i write an offer yeah so what i was saying that the two people i met yeah, tell me about that yeah that, so that was like three weeks ago now josie had a listing our teammate and she was going out of town and two people called her to see the house. So I know Josie personally. So I know she's like, I don't want to work with unrepresented. So even if I was in town, like I'd call Haley or Ryan or Damon and ask somebody on my team. We're yeah. lucky to have that to show them the listing and then like hopefully work with them. But <laughs> I was telling you guys, I kind of joked that when she was like, yeah, I have two people who are dead set on being unrepresented and I want you to show them the house. I kind of like rolled my eyes and I was like, great. Like, I can't wait to spend my Friday night showing these people who want to do it by hey, themselves. You went like 7 p.m. on a Friday. Yeah, 7 p.m. Yeah. on a Friday. I threw on jeans and a, a, the Damon Sells Homes t-shirt um, and yeah. like no makeup. And I was just like, oh, I'm like, I'm opening the door. You know, like that was kind of my attitude. Like that's what they want from me. And I also scheduled it them at the same time because I was like, I'm not going to go twice for these people. But anyway, after talking to them and like explaining to them that the commission that the seller's paying has already been negotiated. A lot of people don't realize that. Yeah. It's like it would before August 17th, the way it worked is, yeah, the seller would hire us or any listing agent to sell their property, making up a number, but let's say it was 6%. Um, that's the fee that they're paying us to sell the house. If we bring the buyer through our marketing, so that's what the fee is. If there was a buyer's agent, then we would share, we would offer a portion of that to the buyer's agent. Yeah. When people didn't understand like, oh, I'm unrepresented, so I'm going to save 3%. Yeah. No, that's not how it works. So, like, you make your offer. The the offer at the time had nothing to do with commission. Yeah. That was already pre-negotiated. So I explained that to them. I was like, yeah, we've already, this contract is from before then, and we've already negotiated, and that's what's getting paid. Whether Josie shares it with another agent or not is totally up to her. So you being unrepresented, like, I wouldn't just tell yourself that you're saving money that you're guaranteeing that you're going to keep that commission because it's already been it's already in the contract and I knew that and then I also told them they were like well can you help me fill well actually they said what would you offer for the house and I was like I can't tell you that I'm not your agent like you know that's something that your agent would have to tell you or you if you want to represent yourself figure out what you want to offer for this house and so that was a big sticking point with them and then also they were like it's a little sticky for us to walk that line as yeah Asia, and you can't give them substantive advice yeah i could get in trouble for that what it, and yeah if i give them bad advice and we have no contract with one another so um especially with all the changes it's like more than ever, I think every agent is kind of like, I'm not going to do anything without something in writing, or at least that's me personally. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what the settlement says. Oh, that's good. I'm playing by the rules. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and then they said, can you help me fill out the contract? Which, no, I can't help you. I mean, I can provide it to you and like show you what needs to be filled out, you know, administrative work. That's what I can do. Um, but I can't go through each paragraph and explain to you the pros and cons of what you put into each section. So by the end, they both decided that they wanted me to represent them. They both did. They both did. They realized they, they didn't know what they didn't know. And actually, one of them ended up buying the house. And there were seven other offers, and they won. And so I don't know if they'll see this, but I'm, I mean, I'm not talking badly about anybody. It's just I think there's a huge misconception. Yeah. And, and all it takes sometimes is just a conversation, education yeah. for people to realize really what it is that they're considering when they consider being unrepresented. Uh, to me, it's just like representing yourself in court or you, sometimes you hear about some of these uh, like NFL players who, oh, he negotiated this deal and didn't have an agent. Well, it turns out it's a terrible deal. Yeah. It's team friendly. Yeah. Right. So, you know, that's why most everybody has an agent and 
We definitely recommend that. Yeah, and they ended up doing a home inspection. They actually were not the highest offer. And then there were things that come after that, right? They're like, what title company should I use? Like, what inspector should I use? Is there any other inspections I should do besides a general home inspection? Am I allowed to look for mold? Or just like, there's been a million questions. There always is. And so it's nothing against yeah. them. It's the same way for everybody, but it's just crazy to me to sometimes think back and think you guys were about to do this by yourself and we talk every yeah. day we've talked every day for the last three weeks and i love it i love talking to you guys i love helping you but like yeah and lots of, he, you said they had a lot of questions yes yeah. right along the way psa to everybody like it's okay to use an agent just make sure you're working with somebody who will negotiate on your behalf and whatever your concerns are voice them you know yeah i'm worried about commission what can you do for me yeah that's what, and that's what we're here for. And that's what our goal is always to provide more value to you than what the cost is. And that's what we exist to do is to serve people and help them make the biggest decisions of their life when it comes to their home. Well, it's good to talk about, you know, life, kids, real estate, some stuff going on. Yeah. And uh, I don't know. Do you think we should do it again soon? I think so. Yeah. Part two. All right. All right. Cool. Thanks. <laughs> See ya. <laughs>